When a project becomes so big that people start calling it a mega project, it's safe to assume that the budget is going to run pretty high. Construction is infamous for being an industry where budgets are a lot more like fanciful suggestions than hard guidelines. Because of this, many projects end up costing far more than expected. From an airport built on an artificial island that looks like it's floating in the ocean, to a theme park in Dubai that will cover over 100 square miles once completed, here are five of the most expensive mega projects in all history. Kansai International Airport, more commonly known simply as Kanku, is the main international airport in the greater Osaka area of Japan. This airport is the closest one to Osaka, Kyoto, and Kobe. It is located on an artificial island that was created specifically for it in the middle of Osaka Bay. Creating this island proved to be the most difficult part of the project. The first thing to be completed were the sea walls. Then, over a period of three years, 10,000 workers with 80 ships spent a total of 10 million work hours to fill in the island at an average height of over 100 feet. The bridge that was built to reach the island cost at least $1 billion in and of itself. It opened on September 4, 1994, to deal with the overcrowding that was going on at the original Osaka International Airport. The airport is made of two terminals, Terminal 1 and Terminal 2. Terminal 1, which was designed by the Italian architect Renzo Piano, is the longest airport terminal ever created. It's slightly over one mile long, so you better hope you went to the right terminal or it could take you a while to go back the other way. With over 20 years of planning and three years of construction, the project became the most expensive civil works project in modern history at a total cost of right around $29 billion. Dubai Land is an entertainment complex that is currently being built in Dubai by Tatweer. When it was announced in 2003, it was considered one of the biggest and most ambitious leisure developments ever proposed in history with an initial budget of $64 billion. But as often happens with construction projects, this ended up being a very naive estimate. Due to Dubai's financial crisis, the development process hasn't exactly gone according to schedule. As of 2021, 76 billion has been spent on the project. When it's finished, Dubai land will cover 107 square miles of land. It won't really be one big thing, but a collection of 45 different mega projects and 200 smaller sub projects. The park is divided up into six different zones or worlds. Attractions and Experience World, Sports and Outdoor World, Ecotourism World, Leisure and Vacation World, Retail and Entertainment World, and Downtown. When it's completed, it will be double the size of Walt Disney World and will be the biggest collection of theme parks in history. However, None of the individual parks in Dubai Land will top Disney's Animal Kingdom as the largest theme park in the world. The Sahara Kingdom will be Dubai Land's largest park, covering nearly 5 million square feet. It's going to be a combination of VR and normal, real theme park rides. There will also be a ton of retail stores, hotels, and even residential areas. When finished, this mega project's total cost will likely exceed $100 billion. King Abdullah Economic City is a mega project that was announced in 2005 by King Abdullah bin Abdulaziz Al Saud, the former king of Saudi Arabia. The city, which is located beside the coast of the Red Sea, will be 67 square miles. It's located 60 miles north of Jeddah, which is the major commercial hub of Saudi Arabia. It is only about an hour's flight away from any major city in the Middle East, making it a convenient business location. The total cost of the city is expected to be $95 billion. This manufactured city, along with five other economic cities, is part of the Saudi's ambitious 10x10 program. 
Their goal was to make Saudi Arabia one of the world's top 10 investment destinations by the year 2010. The first stage of the city was completed by 2010, but construction is still ongoing. Why is Saudi Arabia building this huge city in the first place? Well, oil isn't going to last forever. The point of all this is to diversify the nation's currently oil-based economy. Saudi Arabia is the biggest economy in the Middle East and the 18th biggest in the world, largely thanks to oil. Saudi Arabia has the second largest proven petroleum reserves in the world behind Venezuela, and they're the largest exporter of petroleum. They also have the fifth largest proven natural gas reserves. The hope is that this new megacity will be another step away from their reliance on oil and will help diversify their economy. As of now, the city is set to be completed by 2035. California High Speed Rail, or CHSR for short, is a publicly funded high-speed rail system that is currently under construction in California. Its end goal is to connect the Anaheim Regional Transportation Intermodal Center in Anaheim and Union Station in downtown Los Angeles. This will be done with the Salesforce Transit Center in San Francisco. When completed, if that ever happens, it will mean that you could take a train from LA to San Francisco in just two hours and 40 minutes. It would be six and a half hours by car. California high-speed rail was created by an act of the California State Legislature. A high-speed rail plan was presented to the voters of the state and approved in 2008. Since then, the project has run into some serious problems. It is way behind schedule, the management of the project is seriously troubled, and there have been endless issues with getting the land needed to build the tracks. Not to mention the various engineering issues. The project was originally estimated to cost $33 billion. The final cost is now estimated at $98 billion. It's possible, however, that it will never be finished. It's become something of a controversial issue, with Californians evenly divided on the question of whether or not it should be continued. If it is completed, it's likely that it would take another 12 years. Now, you may not have heard of the other entries on this list, but I'm pretty sure everyone watching has heard of the International Space Station. It's a modular space station in low Earth orbit. The ISS is a multinational collaborative project involving America, Russia, Japan, much of Europe, and Canada. The station is primarily a microgravity and space environment research lab for conducting scientific research. Its construction cost a total of $150 billion. The assembly of the ISS was a major leap forward in the realm of space architecture. Most of the modules that make up the ISS were delivered by the space shuttle and then installed by the ISS crew that were already there with help from the shuttle crew. This involved over a hundred spacewalks, something which is a bit more logistically difficult than walking down the street on a normal construction project. Since its construction, the ISS has been in continuous operation. A crew of seven people live and work there while it travels around the Earth at five miles per second. It makes a full orbit every hour and a half. It's powered by an acre of solar panels, and sometimes, if you look up at dawn or dusk, it can be seen by the naked eye. Technically, the full name of the interstate highway system is the Dwight D. Eisenhower National System of Interstate and Defense Highways. But uh, nobody has time to say all of that when they're explaining which exit to take. After Eisenhower became president in 1953, his administration decided to propose an interstate highway system. This led to the passing of the Federal Aid Highway Act. Unlike the thing which predated it, the U.S. highway system, the interstates were created to be an all-freeway system with national standards for construction and signage. It would be annoying if, for instance, every state had their own sign that meant exit only. Some older freeways were just adopted into the system, but the vast majority of the routes were totally new construction. 
The freeway network in the U.S. was greatly expanded, especially in dense urban areas. These freeways were always the most controversial ones, since building them often meant destroying old, established neighborhoods. It's much easier to build a freeway in the middle of Kansas than, say, in the middle of Chicago. This controversy became so intense that as a result of the protests and revolts during the 60s and 70s, several interstates that had been planned were abandoned or rerouted. Certain urban areas had to be avoided so that neighborhoods could be left standing. The original interstate highway system wasn't deemed fully complete until 1992, although there were deviations from the original plan during that time and certain stretches didn't really conform to federal standards. The final cost of construction was approximately $459 billion, adjusted for inflation, making this likely the most expensive megaproject in known history. Even today, the system continues to grow as new routes are added. The world is full of impressive megaprojects, many of which cost a bit more than expected. As the years go on, who knows what else will be developed. If you enjoyed this video and want to see more just like it, be sure to click the link on screen now. With that, thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.